It is time for another Monoprice Mod Mondays on the BV3D channel. Today we're installing a parts cooling duct and a 50 millimeter blower to keep things cool. Stick around and I'll show you how it's done. I'm Brian and you're watching BV3D. This is the parts cooling solution we're going to use, the Cobra Cooler Plus for the Maker Select Plus. A couple of reasons for using a new parts cooling solution like the one shown are better nozzle visibility and better airflow. The stock cooling solution consists of a 40 millimeter fan mounted to a bracket with this small slit here for airflow. And that only cools one, one side of the part when you're printing. Uh, a better solution is to have a blower like this moves a lot more air, and you've got air coming from multiple directions using a duct like the one shown. So let's go ahead and download the parts. And then we'll slice that and get it printed. So here's the part imported into Kura, and I've got this one flat spot at the back, flat on the bed. And we'll be using supports to handle the overhangs because they're kind of severe. So there's going to be a lot of support material and it'll look something like this. I've got the support material set for only over build plate because we don't want support inside the model when it prints. That'll just block airflow. So we'll get that file saved out to the desktop. Then we can drop it into Octoprint and we can get that part started printing. And here it comes. Through the magic of time-lapse photography, we can watch a seven hour print occur in just a few seconds. One thing you'll notice is that it's a little bit stringy, so I need to work on my retraction settings, but apart from that, everything's coming out fine. All right, let's turn our attention to the blower. We've got a 24 volt printer, so we need to make sure we buy a 24 volt blower, otherwise bad things can happen. The next thing we need to look at is the wiring of the connector. Many times these are wired backwards and so you'll need to flip the red and the black. This is the connector on the blower and this is the connector from the stock fan. You'll notice that they're wired opposite to each other. And we put them together so you can see that a little better. So we're going to need to flip the red and the black connectors so that it matches the stock connector. So we're going to need to pop these out. And the easiest way to do that is with something small and pointy like a pair of tweezers. There's a little release lever on each one of these connectors and you just kind of push it and pull the connector out. Sometimes it's a little fiddly, so you got to work at it. Be careful not to mess up your connectors, but once you've got them out, then you can switch the order and you can line them back up and snap them back in. One and two. And then just confirm and make sure that you've got them in the same order as they are on the stock connector. And we're good. Okay, so here's the completed duct. Now the supports were a little tough to remove on the bottom and it kind of scarred the part up a little bit, but I'm not that concerned about it because that's not gonna show. Let's go ahead and get the blower put into place. It just mounts like this and it's held in place by a single screw. I used an M3 by 25. And then just a simple M3 nut on the other end of it to keep everything in place. Now it'll be a little loose if you just finger tighten it. So we'll get a driver and we'll tighten it down the rest of the way. Shouldn't take but a couple of turns. And now it's on there a lot better. There will be a little play in it, but that's all right. It's not gonna go anywhere. Now we'll pull a couple of screws and remove the stock parts cooler. And we can just set that aside here on the build plate. Around the back of the printer, we'll pull these two screws so we can unplug that ribbon cable 
and get access to the breakout board where the fans plug in. Remove the screws, unplug the ribbon cable and set it aside, and then remove the metal cover and set it aside. Now we can get access to the plugs. The cables that plug into that board are usually kept bundled together with a zip tie, so you may need to get in there with some side cutters and very carefully remove that zip tie. Give it a clip and pull it out. Just like that. Now we can unplug cables from the breakout board. Let's unplug the X-Limit switch. Unplug the heater. And unplug the thermistor. That gets that out of the way and we can unplug the fan. I've gone ahead and unplugged the extruder as well as the heat sink cable just so we can get a clearer view of what's going on. Right here in the front corner we're going to plug in that blower. Then we can plug in the heat sink fan, plug in the heater, Plug in the thermistor. Plug in the x-axis limit switch. And finally, plug the extruder motor back in. Then we can kind of neaten these cables up a little bit. We're going to use an M4 by 16 screw to mount this duct and blower to the back of the extruder assembly. I've already removed one screw from the back of the bearing block and we'll use that screw hole to do the mounting. Go ahead and screw that in, tighten it up, and we should be good on that. Check around the front and make sure that the ductwork is level. We'll go ahead and neaten up those cables a little bit, and then we're going to reattach that ribbon cable holder. Put the screws in both sides, and then make sure that they're all tightened down. Once that's done, we can reattach the ribbon cable. And with that snapped in, we should be good to go. Okay, we're at the end of our episode. Please like, subscribe, and share. Doing so helps the channel and it makes my day a little bit brighter. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, you can give it a thumbs down, but either way, leave me a comment to let me know what you liked or didn't like. Links for the cooling duct are down in the description, and if you haven't subscribed yet, you can do so by clicking the BB3D icon right here. And right over here is a video that YouTube thinks you might enjoy. There are channel support links in the description too if you're so inclined. Have fun with your upgraded printer. Now go print something cool.